Batman's in the hospital. We dropped him off this morning. We're in Sydney. We're in a little hotel that accepts, like he's pet friendly. So we're able to hang out with Sam this morning. And when Batman's surgery is done, we'll be able to bring him back here as well because they've got to check on him in the morning as, as well. So this is only like 15, 20 minutes from the hospital down here in Sydney. We're actually at Kirribilli, which is right near the harbour on the North Shore. If you look that way, that's the city on the other side of the harbour. Harbour Bridge is kind of that way. Kirribilli's a little spit type thing that points in, out into the, the harbour and a lot of old buildings and that have been turned into hotels and stuff. A lot of old sta sandstone work which you see a lot in Sydney. Oh, white brush scrub turkeys. Just down the suburban street. Here comes another one. Oh, there you go, there's more. Parking inspector's been along here. That's where I'm walking down the street. Once it hits 8 a.m., it's only two hour parking along here. Hey, don't usually get to look at Sydney Harbour from this side. So there's the Opera House and the city, CBD, and the Harbour Bridge. Coming across from, I think this is known as Milson's Point, this side. But we were staying at Curabilly, so we're just over there. Oh, there you go. Sydney Harbour from this side. <laughs> that way's the ocean, that way's Parramatta. Thursday morning, we've got our big bloke's breakfast this morning. The big bloke, no, the beautiful bloke's. Beautiful bloke's breakfast. Then we got rid of the big bit. Uh, it was something we used to do quite often, like every, around every Father's Day, and community groups in, footballers, people displaying cars, and a rock climbing wall, which we got this year again as well, um, stalls, everything like that. And the kids bring up their significant male role model at home, be it dad, uncle, older brother, grandfather, anything like that. And it's basically just like a fair carnival type thing for the f first part of the, the day. So it goes up to 11 o'clock today. Thursday being our short day, we only have period three and four now, which means I've still got year eight, period four. We've got cooking happening. But this is our first little bloke's breakfast um, since pre-COVID. I think our last one was in 2019 or may have been even 2018. It started being a thing where we might have done it every second year. Um, and yeah, the return of it, long awaited. Um, it is a really good event for the, the school and the community. Let's see how it goes. I'm. I run a, a go-kart track activity because um, in the past my metal teacher took um, some go-kart plans that I got when I was at uni and 
he built the carts with his um, class but modified them to be push carts rather than go carts because you can't go motorizing them and they look pretty good and they we basically set up a, a track where the kids have to be in, be in teams of two push them around the track and when they get to the back to the start they have to do a um, driver and pusher change and then do a second lap and they get timed and we'll do our like little awards or um, merits trophies for the best time in each age group type thing so well I think it's a, like each year group that out but I checked on the carts the other day um, put air in the front tires the tubes and valves from the back tires seem to have disappeared so <coughs> I just got one of my staff to buy four new back wheels and another one to put them on he put them on yesterday and we'll borrow witches hats from the um, PE faculty set up our little course on the on the courts. Looking forward to it. Batman is doing okay. He's um, getting around really well. He when I opened the front door this morning, he just ran out because he could see. Whereas in the last couple of weeks, he's been stopping and walking on the steps and waiting till the light went on and then he still stepped down really carefully. This morning he could see he's got his big, uh, one of those cones so he doesn't scratch at his eyes. And he has to have a few oral medications with his food morning and night. And he has to have three sets of drops morning and night. And two sets of drops. But two of those drops he has to have four times a day and so my wife will be doing the other ones in the middle of the day like spread out and they're like anti-inflammatory and something for the pain and one is a pressure medication to stop pressure build up in the eyes while they're healing he doesn't like having the drops while I was doing the drops in the lead up where it was just one one of the drops morning and night it wasn't too bad he was a little bit but he wasn't too bad now when you've got to do three sets and sort of space them out at least five minutes apart he doesn't like them but just like any of his medications I think he'll get he'll get used to it and apparently he'll have to be on the drops for quite a while they said months the oral medications are just take them till they're finished and the only thing you can't do at the house is go through the doctor I remember last time he had a cone on when he had surgery he did figure out a way of deforming the cone to push himself through the door but being that it's just the like the first morning back at the, the house he just sort of stands and waits at the door wait until you open it this won't come out in a timely fashion boy did I see some comments regarding the presidential debate and so I was looking at a few of those things on um, YouTube last night the scariest or most ridiculous thing of the whole night were Trump supporters online still defending that he is the right person and that he killed it in the debate and that she was lying the whole time through that it was rigged it was three on one because the moderators only fact checked him I haven't watched the whole debate I plan on it but I saw a lot of bits and pieces that are obviously hand-picked to show the craziness of him but I do intend on 
watching the whole thing and I do wonder whether there'll be another one. I know that somebody asked me, do you plan on there being another one? He goes, oh, I won this one, why should I? <laughs> he was walking out there delusional and saying he won it. Some of the crazy crap he was saying. <coughs> Friday the 13th. Just had year 11. Um, boys still chasing N awards. And one of them had a task that he just hadn't done online and that's where everything gets collected to be marked and i said we've got class we'll sit down here with a laptop and you can get it all done sure enough he sat here got it all done there was a couple of them doing stuff to try and get it all cleared and so i'm getting things cleared off i think that that's probably enough going to be enough for him to now get through let's check my laptop yeah i think that's going to be enough for him I still have three, I think, that are at risk. Um, I'm not sure on the exact date that they have to get everything done, but I know that we had to do nominations. We got the emails yesterday, so I've done my nominations for those students who haven't been doing the work. Um, and to be honest, they've been They've been pretty lucky that I have been in relieving positions and on training and that sort of stuff. And so we should be doing task four and completely past task three. But at the moment we're working in task three. We've started task four, barely, but we're still working through the prac of task three. And there's only a few who started it. But because of that, if that was the only award the kid had, then that's not going to count. Students who had task two and task three and other, all these other things, they're the ones that were sort of getting caught up. If we'd been on full track and finished task two in term one, which we pretty much did, um, you know, we got most of the stuff done and I did give them task three right at the start of term two we started doing a little bit of the theory but when I wanted to try and do that they wanted to try and keep catch up on N awards or wouldn't and when task four came I printed them out showed it to the few who were here they've all got access to it on evidence central because it gives it to them as soon as it's available. And I also gave them a copy of this printout version on our Google Classroom. So I'm keeping, I'm trying to keep track with Regent's calendar. But we've fallen well behind because of them sort of dragging and not applying themselves as much as they could. Like I've said to them in the class, I really don't want to kick anybody out, anybody out of my class. Um, and we'll try and get everybody through, but I can't do the work for them. It's their work they've got to do. And while the quality of the first projects was pretty ordinary and they'll admit that what they were being assessed on was whether they worked safely whether they had their boots on whether they wore safety glasses whether they used the tools safe and if they did the prac and were doing that I can say okay I can check you off to say that you've done the task and in some cases, the kids did the prac, they might not have done it completely safety, but they did the work for the prelim HSC. Doesn't mean they've gotten the certificate, but they've done the work for the prelim HSC. There's still a couple of sections where I've got to do questioning individually with the kids, and I can't get that done when they don't get the other stuff done. And I even had one or two where I said, like, we can do that questioning now, and they went, 
Uh, no, I'll do it another time. When will that other time ever be? So it's going to be a case that they'll go through the course. They'll have done enough for the HSC, but they won't get the Cert two, And that's... That's the disappointing part, that they just sort of scrape through the HSC, but don't work enough to get the Cert two, which is what the course is for, to get them a foot into the industry. And some kids really do do that. They, they really do work hard and get their full certificate. But it's been a few years since that's, that's actually happened here. I think the last time might have been pre-COVID because when all the lockdowns happened, the classes that I had those few years, they just gave up on just about everything school. This group coming through now in year 11, they were like year eight when the first lockdown happened. Is that right? Yeah. Um, so it affected them in the junior years and because Nessa put a relaxation on um, assessment for stage four, which they were part of, I think that relaxed attitude has flown th flowed through with them because when I was doing the end award process with them as year 10 last year, some of them even said, yeah, like, we didn't really have to do assessments in year seven, eight, like in year eight, nine and stuff. And now they do. And now it's really catching up on them. It's a mind shift and an attitude shift that's needed. And I hope that more of them can get it than currently are. Only time will tell. But I want to see as many of them get through as possible. I really do want to see as many of them get through as possible. Because if they want to go into construction, this is, this is the best starting point for them. We'll see what happens.